In this video, we'll be taking a look at three NFL games happening on October 8, 2023, and providing you with free team picks and total picks for each one of those games. So two picks for each game, six picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three NFL games after fully watching this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks, parlay picks, and much more. Now let's get started. Tennessee Titans vs. Indianapolis Colts On Sunday afternoon, the Tennessee Titans and Indianapolis Colts clash at Lucas Oil Stadium in a battle of American Football Conference South rivals. The Titans got their second win with a 27-3 home win over the Cincinnati Bengals. The Colts were dispatched in overtime 29-23 by the Los Angeles Rams. Both of these teams are coming into this game with a record of 2-2 and looking for a key divisional win. The Colts are coming off an overtime loss to the Rams, but have shown that they can compete and their huge road victory against the Ravens in Week 2 was a notable result. Quarterback Anthony Richardson has been playing well for the Colts in his rookie season. He is not only a threat throwing the football but also running and he has already scored four touchdowns on the ground. In his last game he managed only 11 completions but this week he could benefit from airing it out more as the Titans' pass defense is the NFL's 10th worst unit in terms of passing yards allowed. If the Colts can establish the play-action pass early, Richardson should be able to find his star witty out Michael Pittman throughout the game. The biggest threat the Titans bring to the table is Derrick Henry and their run game as the Titans' pass offense doesn't possess much of a threat. Veteran quarterback Ryan Tannehill is averaging less than 200 yards per game and has four interceptions already. The Titans are also 0-2 on the road after losses to the Saints and Browns and struggle playing away from home. Indianapolis led a feverish comeback last week against the Rams before falling short, but Anthony Richardson showed poise in the fourth quarter leading the charge. He will get some help in this contest. Colts running back Jonathan Taylor was spotted at practice this week, and it appears Indianapolis is set to activate him off the PUP list. These teams are familiar with one another, and the Colts are a different club with their best player in the lineup. Offensively, Tennessee has been near the bottom of the NFL, registering the fifth fewest yards per game, and ranked 28th in passing yards. If Henry is unable to run the ball effectively, Tannehill will struggle on third and long. Dating back to last season, the Titans have lost nine of their last 11 games, and five in a row on the road. The Colts nearly pulled off a stunning upset of the Rams last weekend, as Richardson continues to prove Indy right for gambling on him with the fourth pick in April's draft. The defense also showed up in a big way in the second half, throwing Stafford off his game. The Colts are third in the NFL in sacks and will make life difficult for Tannehill on Sunday, pressuring him early and often. They will rattle him, forcing him into shorter drives and at least one turnover. If Taylor is even 75% healthy, he gives Indianapolis a serious advantage against Tennessee's fourth-ranked run defense, as the Titans are 23rd in passing yards allowed. He tilts the favor in the Colts' direction, allowing Richardson to efficiently move the football down the field through the air. The Titans beat the Bengals last week, but I'm not convinced they can cover by a field goal on the road in a divisional matchup against the upstart Colts. So the Indianapolis Colts to cover the spread as underdogs is our full game side pick. Divisional games can often go under the game total due to the teams being very familiar with each other. For starters, neither of these teams possesses a huge threat through the air. The Colts rank in the bottom 12 of the league for passing yards per game and the Titans have passed for the fifth fewest yards per game. The Titans average only 18 points per game with the Colts averaging 24. Although the Titans' offense has been inconsistent to open the year, they have played well defensively. Entering this divisional contest, they are allowing only 17 and a half points per game and are fourth in rushing yards allowed. Jonathan Taylor is expected to play, but he will be on a snap count in his first action back, likely limited to 10 to 12 carries. Over their last 10 games, neither team has averaged more than 25 points per game. Both clubs will look to establish the run, and I do not expect either to be effective. The total number has gone under in seven of Tennessee's last eight games. I expect both of these teams to run the ball for the most part, which would kill a lot of time, as well as multiple possessions with the teams exchanging punts and playing for field position. This will be a low-scoring game considering the familiarity with one another and the lack of a passing game. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. 
New York Giants versus Miami Dolphins. The New York Giants face the Miami Dolphins with both teams heading in opposite directions to start the season. The Giants have a 1-3 record and are coming off a brutal 24-3 loss at home to the Seattle Seahawks. The Dolphins are 3-1 but hope to rebound after a 48-20 trouncing to their division rival Bulafo Bills. The Giants hope to climb out of last place in the National Football Conference East Division while the Dolphins look to regain first place in the American Football Conference East Division and the upcoming game looks to be a good one as a result. The G-Men are coming off an embarrassing loss in primetime to the Seahawks, and I think they'll come out fired up and at least keep this one close. The Dolphins came crashing back down to earth last week with a 28-point loss, and I'm not so sure their 3-0 start was ever quite as great as it seemed. Their first two wins were against the Chargers and Patriots, and both of those games came down to the wire and easily could have been losses. The only team they've beaten convincingly so far this season is the Broncos. The the Giants are desperate to bounce back and it's easy to think that they'll at the very least cover a 12 and a half spread. The problem is that the Dolphins have been rolling and they look to shred a terrible team in front of their home crowd. The Dolphins, who average 37 and a half points per game, should drive down the field at will with Tua Tagovailoa finding Tyree Kill and the rest of the receivers open in space and allowing them to gash the Giants' defense with their speed. The Dolphins also look to limit a Giants offense that is scoring only 11 and a half points per game with Jevon Holland making plays in the box to stop the run game while also breaking up passes along with cornerbacks Xavier Howard and Justin Bethel to eliminate the Giants passing attack. We have the best scoring offense in the Dolphins against the worst scoring offense in the Giants. Neither defense has been good through the first four games, so I'd consider looking at the over. However, I'm laying the chalk with the Dolphins. The Giants offensive line remains absolutely horrendous and they'll have less time to patch things up after playing last Monday. If anything, this is a chance for the Dolphins' defense to build some confidence. The Giants' offensive line couldn't block me from getting in the backfield, let alone Bradley Chubb, Christian Wilkins, and Andrew Van Jinkle. Daniel Jones has been sacked 22 times in four games. No thanks. New York has three offensive linemen and running back Saquon Barkley listed as questionable. Even if all of those players are able to go, I still don't think they can keep pace with this dynamic Miami offense. Tua Tagovailoa continues to prove that he's the real deal, and it certainly helps when you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle as your receivers. This is the largest spread in Week 5 of the NFL, but I'm not even hesitating to lay the points with the Dolphins here. And while they're licking their wounds after getting trounced by the Bills last weekend, it's small potatoes compared to what the Giants are going through. New York may be the worst team in the whole NFL. Ultimately, I think New York will put up a few points in this game, but look for Miami to win this one by a sizable margin. So the Miami Dolphins to win and cover for the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Miami got clobbered last week, but it wasn't because of its offense. It was because the Dolphins' defense let Josh Allen have whatever he wanted en route to a 48-point showing by the Bills. The Giants' defense has also struggled, giving up 24-plus points in all four of their games this season, even when they played Josh Dobbs and the Cardinals. Defensive coordinator Wink Martindale loves to send pressure, but I don't think his secondary is good enough to hold up against Tyree Kill and Co. if he blitzes a ton here. Giants quarterback Daniel Jones has been much better on the road than at home home this year, and he should finally be able to have some success against a Dolphins defense that is allowing 7.9 yards per pass attempt. It also looks like running back Saquon Barkley may be able to return, which would be a massive boost to the offense, although you'll need to confirm that closer to gamma time. The Giants have an awful offense and it's easy to think that the upcoming game will be low scoring because of it. However, the Dolphins have the best offense in the league and both teams look to step up and find the end zone with ease. The Giants should pile up the points against a Dolphins defense that allows 30 points per game, with Daniel Jones finding Darius Slayton and Darren Waller open down the field to keep drives going and move the chains. The Dolphins, who have scored 90 points in the past two games, should run up the score against the Giants, who are allowing 30 and a half points per game, with Tua Tagovailoa finding Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, and the rest of the pass catchers open down the field and in quick passing patterns while Devon Chain and Raheem Mostert gash the Giants on the ground with big runs. Honestly, this feels like a spot where the Dolphins have a chance to clear the total by themselves. It would take another Herculean effort, like Week 3 against Denver, but I think they have it in them. Well, maybe not 70 points, but mid-40s doesn't seem outlandish with this talented group led by play caller Mike McDaniel. It'll be an opportunistic matchup for them as they take on a Giants squad that's allowing 30 and a half points per game. You know who's right above the Giants in terms of points allowed. 
The Dolphins, who are allowing 30 points per contest. Brian Dabble is still an offensive-minded head coach, so if he finds his team trailing, he'll have no issue letting Daniel Jones sling it around the field. If the offensive line can keep vertical, the Giants should also contribute to the score. This will be a high-scoring game with both offenses stepping up. Over the projected total is our full game total pick. New Orleans Saints vs. New England Patriots The New England Patriots play host to the New Orleans Saints on Sunday afternoon in an American Football Conference vs. National Football Conference showdown from Gillette Stadium. Both teams come limping into this one, with the Saints sporting a 2-2 record and the Patriots sitting at 1-3. Things started strong for New Orleans but back-to-back -back losses has them searching to get back into the win column. For New England, a blowout defeat to Dallas was humbling, while they'll be thrilled to return home. These two last squared off in 2021, with the Saints grabbing a 15-point win. While this rematch could certainly go either way, two fledgling offenses face off in Week 5 and it's hard to have faith in either program. The Saints are coming off a game in which they committed a litany of mistakes, including a bad fumble by their fullback on their own 5-yard line late in the first half, which ultimately let the Bucks take a 14-3 lead at the break. The Bucks' defense was formidable, holding New Orleans to under 200 yards of total offense and limiting Derek Carr and his offense to a measly 3.2 yards per play. It was one of the poorest performances of Carr's career, so we can only expect some improvement on Sunday, right? Fresh off an objectively embarrassing defeat, a 38-3 but whooping in Dallas, the Patriots play host in Week 5 with plenty of issues of their own. They will be without edge rusher Matthew Judon and rookie cornerback Christian Gonzalez, arguably their two best defensive players, and their offense has been extremely inconsistent. New England was in comeback mode for the majority of the game and still only mustered 253 yards of total offense. Matt Jones threw a few terrible interceptions along the way, garnering more criticism of the third-year quarterback and his future with the team. Bill O'Brien's new offense clearly had a positive impact in a few Pats games this season, but that was a really tough spot. Their second straight road game against one of the best defenses in the NFL. I would expect some positive regression from the Patriots' offense too, although the Saints' defense has shown flashes of greatness this season. This is a quarterback-driven league and with the questions that remain at that position for the Saints, that expects to be the difference in this one. That haunted them last week against Tampa Bay and the Patriots Patriots have the ability to make things a challenge for New Orleans offense for the second straight week. For New England, defensive questions remain but that seems to be a side of the ball that is always strong for them. They'll need to take care of the ball but New Orleans has struggled on the defensive side and gives a glimpse of success in the minds for Mac Jones and company. After the offensive performance last week, expect the Patriots to shift their mindset into a strategy that will breed success against the Saints and the combination of an improved ground game and being at home will shift this one into their favor. These are two evenly matched opponents, presenting a betting situation where it's tough to ascertain any edges. New England should be the more desperate team at 1-3 and in a stacked division that's not slowing down anytime soon. If the Saints' offense looked more mature at this point in the season I may feel differently, but the evidence just isn't there. Situationally the Patriots have a small edge, so the New England Patriots to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Two limited offenses against two exceptional defenses seems like an immediate edge for an under, but this number is quite short. A total of 40 points requires only 10 points per quarter. If we expect positive regression from both offenses, this is a figure that could be surpassed. Neither offense warrants any trust, that's for sure, but coaches tend to focus on the unit that had a more dismal performance the week prior. The Patriots' passing game has been formidable. No doubt Mac Jones' two interceptions against Dallas were egregious, but that was more about an angry Cowboy defense coming off an embarrassing loss of their own. Even in two losses, Jones has thrown better at home, accruing 547 yards, four touchdowns, and an impressive 69% completion percentage at Gillette Stadium. New Orleans is a bend-don't-break defense, displaying mostly good numbers through four weeks in the statistics that matter. Jones should experience plenty of protection, though, since New Orleans is in the bottom third of the NFL in sack percentage and the Patriots' offensive line is top 10 in sacks allowed, the Saints' offense is a little harder to predict. In defense of Derek Carr, the Saints have exclusively faced good defenses, although against the upper echelon it's been shaky. Carr performed well against a Titans pass defense that is notoriously weak, but he hasn't surpassed 230 yards the last three weeks against better units. New Orleans' run game has yet to get going, which presents a scary scenario for Carr against a belligerent defense. The Saints remain uncertain on who will even get the majority of snaps under center and with those questions spanning into practice reps this week, there will certainly be some 
rust and uncertainty to shake off early on Sunday. The Patriots haven't fared much better on offense and with the ground gained their best avenue to success, expect them to take a focus there, as well as controlling the clock and slowing this one down. It doesn't hurt that both defenses are viewed as two of the best, or at least were when the season kicked off. The under is the play in this game. The under is 7-1 to one combined between these two teams. The offenses are some of the worst in the sport and the defenses are just above average. This will be a game keyed on field goal kicking all day long. Expect this one to be ugly and mucked up early and often, as both offenses struggle to move the ball with much success. Despite the improvement we might see from both offenses, it's hard to imagine a game in which both teams score 20-plus points. This expects to be one of the lowest scoring games of the weekend in the NFL and with two tough offenses offenses coming together, moving the ball expects to be a struggle. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed. Subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.